Hello, hello. Welcome to the map. I wanted to show you a fun pose that we're going to play with today. And it's camel pose. This is the standing version. And there's also the kneeling version. So you can be aware of what might work for your body today. This is full camel. Not everyone's going to want to do that. But I added it to today's practice, one, because I miss it and I kind of forget to invite us to do it, triangle being another one that we're going to play with today and kind of in, integrate into our flow. But I also wanted to invite some poses today that are naturally a challenge to our deep and abiding breath. So they really require us to be focused on breath and to be discerning. So we want to notice when we're kind of stuck, contracted, <laughs> surviving something and not breathing deeply. And we want to choose deep breath. And if that means choosing a less intensive posture, then that would be ideal. That's when we're practicing yoga versus striving uh, or something else. So camel pose offers us this wonderful breath into the front of the body, but it won't be possible unless we have all of our support and structure and our back body is actually pressing forward and up and that's very different than I think the way a lot of people think of back bends which is this sort of leaning back thing which feels precarious and you cannot relax into it or breathe into it and you might think of also when we are in crescent lunge or warrior one and we're adding a quote back bend that it's similarly a reaching forward of the heart away from the heel. And if you choose to looking up, if you do look up, it's a reaching of the chin, not a dropping back of the head. So as I'm offering a uh, triangle and camel, these kinds of things that offer some real intensity, they require us to root and reach through the right places, which I'll be reminding you kind of what those are and to be discerning. Notice when you're in striving, see if you can back off, change something a little bit. Always, always go at your pace. I'm gonna be starting us off in ragdoll um, as a way to relax and decompress the spine. If that's just not right for you today, by all means come onto your back body and start in kind of a corpse pose. But the, the theme that I'm really interested in uh, bringing to the mat this week and I did it actually in our uh, in-person yoga class outdoors this week as well, is what does it take to create spaciousness, peace? The opposite, if you will, of busy and striving. And I find it really interesting that the word busy in the Chinese language actually translates to heart killing. I've never forgotten that. It was years ago that I read this and I've read it again since, but I never forgot that. And so I'm trying to choose language that is more like, my life is full right now. Um, but I'm hearing this from so many people, whether they're busy because they have a lot of work and things that, that they're still busy with, or because they've chosen things. They're doing outdoor projects and things like that. And um, they, they're just on a, like a, a, a hamster wheel. So I'm hearing that as such a theme. And I really wanted to bring some sense of peace to the mat, even while we're in flow. So that's where I'd ask our attention to be. Um, I heard a funny little ding in my headphones just now that uh, makes me want to make sure that things are connected the way that they should be. Okay, glad that I checked that. And I think we're good to go. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Forward fold rag doll, starting at the front of the mat, feet in our kind of mountain stance right below the hips. And when you're ready, just drape yourself. Notice my knees are bent, so there's no huge stretch. If you're feeling some intensity in the spine, notice that and invite a slow, steady softening with gravity. If this is too much, remember you can always put your elbows on your thighs to reduce the weight. And then hopefully you'll feel the body progressively give in. Give your head a little yes shake, a little no shake. 
nothing aggressive. And this starting point is in itself a challenge for breath. So I'm going to ask you to notice if you're having a difficult time getting your inhale, you might choose on the inhale to extend the spine, what we say kind of come halfway up, and on the exhale to refold. And this is a similar progression that we use during a sun salutation, which will actually be starting our flow with and warming ourselves up tonight. So getting used to this feeling of rooting, reaching through the crown, the spine as you inhale, exhaling, make sure your abdomen is drawing towards your spine, helping you fold. See if you can bring a little compression and expansion into this. So on the inhale, extending, asking, is there more? Expanding it at the very end, sipping it a little extra. You might feel a good stretch into the chest. And on the exhale, abdomen towards spine, like you're squeezing air out of an old air mattress. Is there more? Again. Breathing through the nose, however, you can at any time sigh or take a breath through the mouth if you're stuffy. On your next inhale, root and rise. Drop the butt, stack the spine, and press up through your powerful legs, pushing the earth away, and exhaling, prayer hands. Nice. So we're going to come into a, a little flow here, as I mentioned, and as we uh, do the right side and the left, um, I'm going to start off in an easier form of dog series, which will be knees down, and then the second time I'll do it knees off the ground, and of course your job is to judge what's right for your body. Each breath has a movement, each movement has a breath, always let the breath lead best you can. So when your inhale comes, slow, deep, and wide, sweep up, press the glutes forward. If you'd like, add that heart lift back bend. Exhaling when it comes, forward fold to your rag doll. Let that head go. Is there more compression? Inhaling, extend halfway up. Exhaling, step back, right foot only into your crescent lunge. Make adjustments so that front knee is directly over the heel. Big inhale, elongating through the spine. And then exhale, downward dog. See if you can lift that front foot rather than drag it. Ah, good. Finding a nice strong downward dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Ah, pressing the heels towards the floor. Inhaling, coming to your first plank, checking it out. Get your hands right under your shoulders. Drop those knees. Shoulder heads anchor. Your exhale, chaturanga, might be just a little bend of the elbows or maybe almost touching the nose to the earth. Bring the pelvis to the earth for cobra. Inhale, extend. Is there more? And exhaling, no wings, no shrugs, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Rooting through the hands, pressing the hips up and back, working the heels towards the floor. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Pause and lengthen the spine. Complete that in-breath. Exhaling, forward fold. Nice core support. Ujjayi. Inhale, root and rise. Is there more? Exhaling, prayer hands. And today we're going to be working a lot with this intentional connection of the thumbs right at the heart center. Draw a full breath and notice what you've created. If you're feeling stiff in the wrists, etc., always stop and love them up. Next inhale, when it comes, let it lead you, sweeping up. Exhaling, fold. Empty, empty, empty. Inhale, extend halfway up. Exhaling, step back, left leg only. Inhale, elongate. Again, we're never cranking our neck and shortening the back of it. Exhaling, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. You've got your vision right between your feet, drishti gaze. 
inhaling to your plank. Thigh bones pressing to the sky. You should feel really strong. Maybe you can even hop a little bit. Exhaling. Let the hips come up a little so your chest leads down to the floor. Inhaling into your upward facing dog. I should have said towards the floor unless you're doing cobra. Downward facing dog. Press back. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Inhale, left foot steps forward. Nice core support, really rounding into that cat back. Exhaling leads you into your forward fold rag doll. Inhaling, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands, thumbs connect to chest. Good, pause. Breathe and notice. Good. We're going to step sideways on the mat. And we want to make sure that we feel really stable and anchored. And that our legs are wide enough that we really feel kind of a, an intensity um, of the straddle. We, we want that and it will really help us out in our triangle pose. So first you're going to take your right foot and turn it 90 degrees. And at first, we're just going to kind of cock the hip and return to neutral. So as you're doing this, the hip bones stay facing that left side of the mat. We're not moving the hips at all in that other rotation. It's just dropping that right hip bone down and returning. We want to make sure that that front leg is not um, hyper extended. So contract your thigh muscles towards the bone and you should feel your knee kind of come into a nice neutral. All right, and let's switch. Neutral that right foot, turn the left foot 90, and begin kind of cocking and uncocking. And so it's worth noticing right here, you know, is one side different? Like this side clunked on my body. And so I'm like, okay, so I was storing some tension there, and this pose is helping me neutralize that, balance it, check that front leg, get it nicely supportive, Check that your shoulders are getting trained to be stacked here. And we'll go back to our neutral feet. All right, now right foot turns again. We're gonna go a little deeper in the pose. And again, just make sure your stance is as deep as you want it to be. Maybe scooch that right foot forward a little bit. Cock that right hip, shoulders are stacked. And initially I'm just gonna take my right hand and let it slide down the inside of my calf as I begin to breathe. So the inhaling comes up a little, exhaling, I might find I can deepen my pose. And I'm keeping this left hand on my hip because adding it into this pose really uh, kind of sends a, a big uptick of intensity. And I would rather have us be able to breathe, again, creating peace inside of what's already a very powerful pose. Think about the rooting through the back foot, pushing and then reaching towards the crown with the crown of the head towards the wall beyond you. Keep staying flat with the body. Don't let the butt swing out behind. There's no goal to reach the floor. Breathing. And if you feel like you want to briefly add that upper arm, you might look up at it or looking at the floor. Good. To come up out of the pose, come straight up like there's a pulley lifting through that left wrist. And release, good, neutral the feet. Rotate the left foot 90. Again, notice if there's an appropriate adjustment for your body. Cocking that hip. Breathing, begin to slide the left hand down inside again, making sure that that right shoulder is stacked back. Makes a huge difference in this pose. I'm also thinking about sending my left butt cheek towards the right edge of the mat. That's gonna lock me into a nice, level of stability. Again, take your head where it's easeful. Breathe. Letting breath really fill the abdomen, the chest. And then if it's appropriate in your body, adding that top arm. Big breath, power from the back leg through the crown of the head. Make sure the head is drawn back. Oh, it feels so good. Inhale, come on up. That pulley system bringing you straight up. And then release. Neutral the feet, bend the knees, and fall. 
nice breath this is like a almost a standing child's pose it gives us a nice release through the back and then when you feel complete you're just going to start going side to side and really pushing off with that straightening leg anchoring and pushing and when you feel ready holding to one side deep breath and the other side holding deep deep breath is there more where does the breath touch and massage and stretch you in this shape beautiful and back to center i'm going to bring my feet in a little bit just reduce stress on the ankles to come into yoga mudra so i'm bending the knees i'm going to reach up behind and intertwine my hands for this uh, yoga mudra position if you can't get your arms straight or the shoulder heads to anchor down and back that gives you that nice shoulder blade sandwich grab a hold of a sock or a scarf or something and let your hands come apart to create that beautiful rotation of the shoulder joints feels so good and then you can pulse the hands towards the hips and up off and if you'd like you might rotate the chest one direction this offers a marvelous stretch into the outside of the ribs as does the breath good and release turn the heels in a little bit just so it's a nice release up we come and exhaling prayer hands good pause center slow the breath down and one of our greatest tools for creating spaciousness in our body and our life is that pause between the turns of the breath. So just observing for a couple more rounds, asking of the inhale and the exhale, is there more? Observing that lovely gap or pause. Light connection to the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth. Check that the rest of the tongue is soft. This also sends a message of non-striving. All right, I'm going to take us into another dog series. And if that's not appropriate, overdoes your wrist, you could always go into some cow-cat. Otherwise, as you are ready, nice long inhale. You could even sweep up. Exhale, I'm going to rotate towards the front of the mat. Plant my hands and step back downward facing dog one full breath here and downward dog making sure your shoulder heads are rotating out that you're really connecting through the rib cage to the back of the body <sighs> inhaling to your version of plank again this might be knees down good make sure you feel nice and strong and stable again you can always hop to check exhaling chaturanga how slow can you go and your choice either to the floor for cobra or suspended for upward dog. Drawing that heart forward. Exhaling, press back either child's pose or downward facing dog. Sometimes we just really crave that hamstring stretch of downward dog. All right. And then pausing for a couple of breaths in whichever version you're doing. And then we're gonna come into a little quad stretch here, kneeling to prepare for our camel. Um, if you would prefer standing quad stretch or coming to pre-bow uh, bow pose on your belly, please do. Otherwise, I'm just going to kneel like so with my butt back by my heels, hands back, and I'm going to do a nice glute squeeze and release. Glute squeeze and release. I'm hoping you're feeling a nice stretch up the quads, maybe even into the hip flexors in here. All right. So then either standing or kneeling for camel. If you're kneeling, you might want to add another layer of padding under the knees. You also want to make sure their hip width may be a little bit wider and that the feet are straight back. And if you're standing again, you can take a, a kind of a nice little bit of wider stance than you would for mountain. So first, I just want us to find again prayer hands. And that's nice connection, thumb into the heart space. And as you begin to breathe and be aware here, start to think about sending these back ribs, kind of at the back of the lungs, towards those thumbs. 
start to also send your glutes towards the wall in front of you. And one of the things I like to imagine this pose is that there's a curved wall in front of me, like you'd find in like a, a wine cask cave or something like that. And then I want to be pressing my body into that curve. And again, I'm always protecting the neck from tension. So if you feel gripping in the neck, remember to drop that chin. Okay, so first movement, I want to simply take my left arm straight up, reaching through the fingers. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna reach it back. And I'm holding and breathing in spite of, I've got some quivering going on in my core muscles, nothing in my neck, because my body is secure and strong here. Good, one more inhale. And then option if you're standing or kneeling is to just bring that hand back in a fist to the kind of top of the butt. The other option is to rotate your head to the left and watch and try to bring your fingers to your heel. Sometimes people will curl the foot under in order to make that connection easier. Some people like to go deeper and press the palm onto the heel. I find I can do the pose, but I feel tension building and I can't breathe as much into it. So instead, I'm gonna stay with fingertips on my heel, pressing the pelvis forward, and if appropriate in your body, now send that right arm straight up. And as you're ready, on an inhale, return both hands straight up like you're clapping above your head, and exhale, either child's pose, or if you're standing, you could simply do a little rag doll. Deep breath into the belly, bring it into your back body. Nice connection, belly, spine, like we do in cat back to return to our starting position. And again, up to you where you'd like to be, kneeling or standing, hands at the heart space, thumbs connecting at the heart, heart pressing towards those thumbs. Big glute squeeze. And initially, just taking that right arm straight up. Committing to spaciousness, to breath, to ease in the neck. See if you can bring that right thumb further back. So I'm sweeping, kind of reaching that hand back. Good. Maybe this is the fullness of your pose. It's wonderful if you can breathe there. Maybe you want to bring that hand down by the top of the pelvis. It's wonderfully stabilizing. Or perhaps you would like to rotate your head to the right and reach those fingers down towards the heel or if you're using the palm. If you would like to go into full camel, you would then be taking that left hand down as well. And what's important, it can be a little hard to find that second heel, is that you continue to press forward through the pelvis and the heart space. If you want to add the head dropping back, you can. Remember though, you're still kind of reaching the chin back. You're not just collapsing your head. And it's a lot for a lot of people's necks. So if you are doing it, make sure when you come out, you rotate your head to one side. Reach one arm up and then the other arm and then release. So I find, you know, often full camel tends to create a lot of tension um, without all the gifts that half camel gives. So just notice in your body if that's an appropriate uh, advancement, and if not, just stay with your half camel. Deep belly breath. Good. And then as you're ready, tuck that tailbone and come up back into your table cat back. And I'm going to release my mat back into its full length. Intelligent hands, inhale in cow pose. Exhaling cat back. And I'm going to be here for a few breaths and then taking it to downward facing dog to move into warrior flow with leg flying. If that's just not your best entry point today, remember you'll start at the front of the mat, stepping back into your crescent lunge or warrior one. As you're ready on an exhale, curling those toes under, send the hips up and back. Inhale, exhale, side. And you might even gaze between the feet and notice if your feet are wider than like five or six inches and maybe bring them closer together so that as I slowly take my right leg flying, I don't feel any big shift in the body. So 
So if you notice something big shifting, that's a compensation. It means your core isn't doing the work. Push the earth away with the hands, reach back through that heel. If you'd like, bend the knee and open up that hip. This is a lot like triangle pose. We want external leg rotation. So I'm using that left butt cheek to press towards the right edge of the mat. One more big inhale. If I want, I'm going to look under my right armpit. Exhaling, neutral, and bring that right foot forward. Crescent lunge. If you need to, you grab it and bring it forward. Nice core support. Right hip bone draws back. So as I come up, I feel really stable and strong. And I'm noticing that I actually got my heel a little forward of my knee, so I'm going to adjust that so I'm truly stable in the pose. Good. So your option for arms here, it might be jet airplane, outside, and that kind of hug emoji as I think of it, <laughs> up, and maybe if you'd like, a little heart opener, reaching up through the tip. Good. One more long inhale. Exhaling, Virabhadrasana 2. Plant that back foot 90 degrees. Thighs externally rotating. And so continuing to notice in your body any little adjustments that are needed. So if you notice that you're you know, kind of striving or what have you, it may be that your stance is too long or that you're just kind of shrugging. So really do a scan of the body. What creates a combination? of power and ease in this spiritual warrior position. On your inhale, straighten that front leg and reach up through that front arm. Exalted warrior. Good. And then as you're ready, cock that right hip, preparing for triangles. Sliding down through that right hand. I'm going to look at my right foot and then add that left arm straight up. Remember, you want to stack those shoulders. Let's see if we can do three peaceful, spacious breaths here. Remember, if this is too much, just return that hand to the hip, or even placing the palm on the sacrum can be nice to encourage that opening of the left shoulder. When you decide to come up, Extend that arm, pulley brings you up, and slowly release. Good. We're going to come into our lateral stretch to get a deeper side body stretch. So bringing that elbow onto the thigh, shoulder heads anchor, or you might take the hand to the floor. Good. And extending that left arm out towards the wall in front of you. This can be done in triangle as well, but I just find in general, it puts people into survival versus exploration and peace. Good. Take one more long inhale here. And then when you're ready, exhale and kind of spiral it out. Plant the hands. Step back to your plank. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Either cobra or upward facing dog. Thigh bones pressing to the sky if you're an upward dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Let's take three or four breaths. You might stay in dog. You might come into child's pose and give those wrists a break. Or if you're doing the kind of standing version without dog series, you might make your way into rag doll. Deep abiding breath. Find that spaciousness. And when you are committed you found the gap. Then it's time to move into flow again. But that's the key, is noticing that some part of us is preparing, always holding on for the next thing, anticipating, and getting better at self-soothing, at telling ourselves, sink, be here now, as if you were going to be here for a very long time. And when you've found that, coming into flow, tuck that tailbone. Come on into your table. Inhale and cow, draw the heart forward. Exhale and cat back to downward facing dog. Intelligent hands and the core does the work of bringing you up and back, belly to spine. Again, check your feet distance. 
and slowly take that left leg flying, working through the heel. Power from the pad of the thumb and index finger. Big breath. Perhaps bend the knee and open up that left hip, really reaching the knee up and away. And making sure that your floor foot is not rotating. Make sure you're kind of pressing again that right glute towards the left edge of the mat. And perhaps gazing under your armpit. One more long inhale. Exhale, neutral it, core support, and bringing that foot forward. Steer left hip bone back, right hip bone forward. This is really important. And we come on up. Again, what's your best version of the pose? Where do your arms want to be today? Jet airplane is marvelous uh, for igniting more strength in our back body and broadening the front. You can also squeeze those upper arms in by your ribs. We're doing a, a lot of other reaching and back bending today, so maybe you don't want to do it here. Spaciousness in breath, letting it be the thing that lifts and settles us. And as you're ready, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Thighs are externally rotating, hands reaching out from the heart. And again, really exploring what's our capacity here. So the more you can kind of pulse and explore, the better. Soft connection of the tongue. If you are at all reaching forward with the body, you're not going to be in the state of stability and ease that we are looking for here. So check that alignment. We should be nicely straight up and down from tailbone to crown. One more. Inhaling, straighten that front leg and reach up. Bringing the hand to the hip, cock the hip, and as you're ready, slide that left hand down inside of the calf. I'm not leaning on the leg. If you do decide to lean at all, it is never on the knee. And then again, you might take that right hand back to the sacrum. Um, I find that this is a wonderful invitation again to really stack the shoulders. And I often find my spine will kind of adjust in a welcome release. It goes, oh yeah, thanks for that spaciousness. And again, we're breathing. Shoulder heads anchoring down the back. It's really easy to forget and kind of shrug here. And perhaps you might add that top arm. And inhaling, let that pulley bring you straight up. And exhaling, release that back arm. Then we're going to bend that front knee again to come into our lateral stretch. Again, either elbow to thigh or taking palm to floor. Same alignments. I want the thighs externally rotating, shoulders stacked. And now I'm going to reach out beyond the head for that deep side body stretch. Again, if you want to pulse it, you can. You can kind of turn your chest a little towards the floor and then engage more deeply back. And one more long inhale, and then exhaling, circle it, plant the hands, and step back to your plank. Final dog series here. Inhaling, slow, deep and wide, shoulders anchored. Exhaling, chaturanga, how slow can you go? Inhaling, no wings, no shrugs, cobra or upward dog. Exhaling, either child's pose, or a downward facing dog. Noticing breath, finding the gap, the pause. And because this has been a, a fairly intense uh, kind of hip opening uh, flow in Selenardi today, um, I want to offer uh, bridge and pigeon alternate or um, recline pigeon. If you would like classic pigeon, then go there uh, now and we'll join you from the back. Okay, so we'll do bridge afterwards. So come on down to your back and then cross that right ankle onto the left knee. Sometimes it's kind of nice to just wag that a little bit. Feet are flexed and then bring the whole deal towards you. 
hugging that right knee, shoulder heads deeply anchored, and rotate a little to the left. Again, pulsing is wonderful. So don't ask the body to kind of go to an intense place and then freeze. The body loves movement, organicness, breath. Finding the gap or the pause. Maybe find a soft smile on your face, just knowing you've done wonderful, wonderful massage for your whole body here today. And as you're ready, return back to neutral. And we'll cross left ankle onto right thigh, feet flexed. Again, bring the whole heel towards you. Hug that left knee. Sometimes I also hold onto the foot, just kind of whatever gives you the best purchase to get that stretch and rotating a little right. Is this side different? And make little angle adjustments. And as you breathe, have fun. It's like a treasure hunt, noticing what you can discover and cultivate. Never let me bring you out early. You've got your own timeline. As you are ready, come back to center and release. We're going to press up into bridge pose. And if you find that you tend to let your knees go out a little bit in bridge, adding the block is marvelously helpful. And it'll really up your strength um, in the inner thighs, pelvic floor, groin area. So as you are ready, anchoring down through the feet, I'm going to anchor down through my upper arms so that I'm making a little bit of a shoulder blade sandwich around the cervical spine. It's nice and supported and not grinding into the floor as I press up. So it's just really my upper arms and a little bit of the outer part of my shoulder blade that's in contact. Good, and you might hold or you might be kind of pulsing. You might come all the way back down and then return. And check that you aren't uh, clenching your jaw or squeezing your tongue to get through for the mouth. If you can find relaxation in all those important places, it tells the whole body, again, we are safe, we are well, we're whole, and come on down. It's bringing knees to belly. It's always good to give the body that little counter shape. And we're going to be doing a breath focus to lead us into our Shavasana. Uh, you might choose to be seated. Uh, you might choose to stay laying down, completely up to you. We're doing breath locks. And I, I think if they're new to you, um, most people will find that they are more easily done uh, laying down. But otherwise, if you're seated and you're really comfortable, it can be wonderful there too. And so that means for most of us, maybe putting a little something under the butt or even sitting on a taller surface so that we can really relax into the upright spine versus holding ourselves. So as you're ready to join me in this, um, just know that the goal is not uh, to hold our breath in or out as long as we can. The goal is to hold it as long as we can while we're able to soften around it. So it's that softening capacity that is our clue as to whether we've reached our edge or maybe even gone past it. And so that's part of what we're navigating. The other thing that we're doing here is deepening our skill of self-soothing. So when I'm noticing tension growing in the breath lock, I scan my body to notice where am I tightening? Is it my lungs, my neck, my jaw? And it's inviting a softening. So it's using that kind of mental invitation to the body. Hey, can you melt? Let's soften around this and so on. So it's fun to kind of find what words work for you. I will be offering some, but you can find your own. As you are ready, eyes closed, turning the gaze up and in, softening all the muscles of the face, tongue, jaw, neck. And as you're ready, take a gentle inhale. So there's no expansion or compression here, just a regular full inhale and exhale, hold out. 
external breath block, external kumbhaka. And as you hold out, again, start with that softening message into the face muscles, jaw, neck, and so on. And begin to witness the sensations, the gentle tugs and pulls of the breath block. You've created a vacuum, and so you'll start to feel, in a way, almost that suction of a vacuum. Notice the first instinct to break the lock. Inquire, can I soften around this? Melting, melting. When it is complete, inhale and hold in. Internal kumbhaka. Inviting a softening melting through the scalp and skull and neck, the jaw, the tongue, the area around your eyes. Maybe even add a soft smile. It's amazing how powerful that message is to our nervous system. That little choice. And witnessing the initial instinct to break the lock See if you can hold just past that. And again, when appropriate in your body, then you'll let the lock go. And you might take a neutral breath in between. When you are ready, you'll go into another round of external and internal breath block. And I invite you to notice a subtle difference between the sensations of the holding out and the holding in. Let's see what we can find. So as you're ready, again, a nice gentle inhale, then exhale and hold out. in your body, inhale, hold in, internal kumbhaka. And right away get curious about any difference in sensation between the holding out and the holding in. You might also notice if one is more peaceful for you, one perhaps more anxiety building, I'm not assuming uh, that everyone experiences kind of a nervousness or anxiousness. But I've had a lot of people report that, which makes sense because our breath is our most immediate link to being alive, right? And so when you t remove the movement of breath and the access to oxygen and so on, um, it can trigger that kind of <laughs> what's going on, right? So as you go into one more round, again, you can take a neutral breath if you'd like, as you go into one more round, just be even more discerning. What is your response? What is your experience? Is it peaceful? Is it a little anxious? If it's anxious, can you self-soothe? Can you remind yourself to soften, to melt, that you're safe, that you can breathe at any time you want? You're totally in charge here. When you are complete with both external and internal kumbhaka, inviting you to just sit with the experience. Notice what it created. Kind of reflect. For me, the breath locks are deeply relaxing and I feel like they slow everything down. <laughs> they slow my thoughts down. They slow my experience of life down, especially when I've been on kind of a treadmill, a kind of go, 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 and I've got the list in my head of the next thing to get to. 
whether it's obligatory or joyful or both. And so I feel like it's a wonderful tool. It's not the only tool. There are others that we can use. But to help us create spaciousness inside of periods of our life that might feel very full, or some people might call it busy. So asking you to notice if this tool was useful and considering using it again. What would it be like to at least once a day to pause and do three rounds? It really only takes a few minutes, uh, maybe kind of five at the most, uh, if you have a really slow breath and long breath lock. I thank you so, so much for coming to the mat. The goal is always, of course, to have a great practice, but also to cultivate a body and being that supports a wonderful life off the yoga mat. And so I hope you'll feel supported uh, throughout the rest of your week by this practice. If you are feeling deeply restful and you'd like to do a Shavasana or seated meditation, this would be a wonderful time. Your body has been prepared for it. If you are complete and you'd like to join me in ohms, please do. As always, we're not so interested in the sound of the ohm, its beauty, if you will. We're very interested in the experience of the vibration in our body. So you might place the hands on the chest, the belly, and just like you did in this recent breath practice, have your attention deeply in the experience of the body. So on the inhale, you might be asking, is there more? Can I bring breath to the back body so that I'm expanding the uh, back of the lung space? As you're ready, gathering that first long inhale. Uh, Inviting the gifts of your yoga practice to circulate through the body, particularly sending healing prana or life force to the areas that you know uh, could need the most support. And you might also offer the gifts of the practice up to anyone in your life. Uh, it could even be a community for whom you have concern. Thank you again so much for being here. We'll see you soon. Om Shanti Shanti. Om peace, peace. Namaste.